I'm done making videos about being a mechanic. I'm not gonna be doing any more how-to tutorials or how to start a mechanic business or how to run a mechanic business. I might still talk about being a mechanic because I, I am still a mechanic, but to show you how I came to this conclusion, let's go back to the beginning. Why, how did I become a mechanic in the first place? At the end of 2018, there were, there were a couple traumatic things that I went through. I don't know if trauma is the right word. It's, I feel like it's kind of an overused word. There, was, there were some tumultuous events that occurred in my life. I was witness to a pretty horrific accident where one guy died and another kid, I say kid, he's, he's the age I am now. Uh, he was a 30 year old guy. He got his legs crushed. I saw that with my own eyes. Uh, a month after that, my dad died and Within a, couple, within a couple months of that, I was living in my car, just, I don't know, rum, ruminating over these events that had occurred, kind of having nightmares over, over the passing of my dad and over this accident that I, that I witnessed. And then I came, I came from the Northwest and I came down to, I, I left from the Northwest and I came down to Arizona and I just took a regular handyman type of job, just doing doing remodeling with some guy, just some rando, nothing special. I don't even remember the guy's name anymore. And, and, and then I, I quit that job. <laughs> I just, the guy just said one too many rude things to me. I was like, fuck you, dude, I'm out of here. So I, I just quit that job. I didn't even have a plan of what I was gonna do next. I was looking for a job when I found this one, so no big deal, right? A week before I quit that job, I had a wheel cylinder go go bad in my little Honda Civic. And I was not a mechanic at the time. I didn't know why there was brake fluid leaking from my rear brakes. I just knew that my car wasn't stopping and I had a leak. So I called a mechanic out to work on my car. He came out, he fixed the problem. He was a pretty friendly guy. We talked for a little while. I ended up not having enough money to pay him back or pay him what I owed him. I went to the bank and it, for some reason, it just wouldn't let me pull the money out. So I told the guy, hey man, I'm real sorry about this. Let me pay you back. You've already done the job. This is, this is a good reason why you should take payment up front. I also got paid the same day that I quit that job. And I called this guy up and I, I said, hey man, I, I got your money and uh, where can I meet you? I'll come and, come and pay you up. I go to this guy's shop. I pay him the money that I owe him and I say, hey man, you got any work for me? You think you could hire me and teach me to be a mechanic? And he didn't, he was barely, barely had enough work for himself. And he just said, Matt, you know how to do brakes, don't you? He knew this because I had told him that I had done brakes before. And he, I said, yeah, I know how to do brakes, sure. And he said, well, why don't you just go put an ad up on Craigslist for doing brakes? And I said, man, do you think that people will pay me to like, can I actually do it? And he said, yeah, of course you can. People will call you. And I went and I put an ad up and I got a couple jobs and I made as much money in two days as I had made in the previous week. So I was like, oh freak, this is not, this is not bad. Like I can't really, I can't really go back and work a job, a regular job if this is possible. And that's the way that I started being a mechanic. I started being a mechanic because somebody said, hey, you know how to do brakes, go put an ad on Craigslist for doing breaks. And over time, people just keep asking for more. They keep asking for more. They want more help, they need more help. Mechanics are hard to find. Honest mechanics, even harder to find. That was March of 2019. The first video that I put up was on July 4th, 2020. It's of, uh, what is it? How to replace a manual transmission in a 1994, 2000, 1994 to 2004 Chevy S10. That was the first video that I put up. And the reason, the reason that I started putting videos up is because people had always told me, Matt, I would listen to you talk on a YouTube video. I would watch videos of you just talking because you know, you have these conversations in the truck, you have these conversations with your friends and I, you know, I get a little out there. I get a little extravagant, extroverted. I get a little animated with my words. I've been a fan of YouTube. I've been watching YouTube since like 2012. And I just thought I could probably make a YouTube channel, but what would I make it about? 
I just have no idea what to make the YouTube channel about, but I'm a mechanic, so why don't I just make a YouTube channel about working on cars? And that's what I did. I made tutorials about how to do the jobs I was doing. I made a, me a mobile mechanic life series, which did not get hardly any views. I made how-to videos about this, that, and whatever. I wanted to do YouTube, but I didn't know what to do, so I made it about my job. That's just, I think for anybody starting out doing YouTube, that's not a terrible idea. Just make videos about your work. In July of 2023, I started making money from YouTube. It's been about a year now. As soon as I saw that first check, my life has changed. I don't wanna do anything else. They'll pay me money to make videos with my camera, just by myself. If people will watch me, I will make money. Hmm. Should I go get a regular job? Should I go work as a mechanic somewhere else? Should I ramp up my mechanic business so that I can you know, just keep being a mechanic? Fuck no, no, why would I do that? I wanna make money with my camera. That was last year. That's when I, start, I got this bug for, for wanting to be a YouTuber. The potential earnings of being a YouTuber are so much higher than being a mechanic that I just can't justify to myself why I would, like you have these two paths. You have a mechanic, you have the mechanic path on this side and you go up and here's the ceiling. This is as good as it's ever gonna get. Maybe you own your own shop, maybe you own a, a chain of shops. On, on this side, you have being a YouTuber. Fucking sky is the limit, guys. Like Mr. Beast, uh, XQC, these are people who are millionaires. I don't really care about being a millionaire. Being, being rich, that's not the goal but I just have to look at this logically. The ceiling is so much higher on making YouTube videos than it is on being a mechanic. They're both skilled trades, but one has a much higher income potential. You have to understand, I have to make money off of my videos. I have to make videos that people want to watch. Now you can make how-to videos and the views, they trickle in. Whenever somebody needs to know how to do a transmission on a Chevy S10, they'll come find me. Whenever somebody wants to know how to do the, air, the AC compressor on a whatever year Ford Focus, they find me. But the, is anybody watching that for entertainment? Are, are people going out of their way to go watch Matt replace the wheel bearing on a Ford Fusion? Not really. Why would anybody care about watching that video unless they need to replace the wheel bearing on a Ford Fusion that day? Something you have to understand about filming a tutorial is that it makes everything way more difficult. You go from just trying to figure out how to fix a car to trying to film you fixing a car. It's way more difficult. How do you get the angles? Are, is there enough light? Some things, you can't fit the camera in there. It's, it's so much more trouble. Once you get done filming, now, so maybe, maybe you have a two hour job, it turns into a three hour job because you're filming. Never mind, some customers don't really like you having a camera out at their house. Now, I, I just never asked permission and I never had anybody deny me permission that I didn't ask for. So it, it really wasn't a problem with the customers that they have, nobody ever said anything to me. But to, it doesn't make you look good. It makes you look kind of, I don't know. I don't know what it makes you look like. I didn't really care, I still don't care. It's not about what the customers think. That's not why I'm quitting doing this. What it is, is that it takes a two hour job and turns it into a three hour job. And then when you get home, you have to edit it. You have taking the memory card out and putting it into the computer. That takes time. That takes space up on the computer. Now you've got it on the computer. You put it into the editing software. You have to, you have to make a coherent cut of all the steps of working on a car. And then you have to have audio. So there's two ways to do this. You can either say the instructions to the camera while you're making the video, but then what if there's a bunch of fucking background noise? What if your customer comes and starts talking to you? That can be awkward. So instead of doing that, I started doing voiceovers. All this takes a whole bunch of extra time. You're talking a, a job that took you two hours, but now it takes you three hours to film. Now you're gonna spend three to six hours editing that video. Man, that's a lot of work. And I don't mind working, you know, I don't mind doing the work. It's not even, 
It's not even the, the work itself that is, that is making me quit. Let's just take a look at what I'm getting paid on this stuff. So let's sort from highest views. This video is how to replace a wheel bearing on a 2013 to 2020 Ford Fusion. Let's just go look at the analytics. I've made $129 in just over a year. This just isn't really worth it. It's not, what, was it worth it for me to do all this extra work on this, on this uh, replacing the, the wheel bearing job? I gotta find the thumbnail, I gotta make the thumbnail, I have to cut and edit everything. It's so much extra work. Let's look at how to replace a radiator on a Ford Freestar. Holy freak, dude, this job, this job was an absolute nightmare. This job was probably one of the worst jobs I've ever taken in my whole life. And when did I do this? I did this almost three years ago. So I was still pretty new to being a mechanic. I've only been doing this job for five years. In mechanic years, that's pretty new. And I've never had an apprenticeship. I've never had a mentor, nobody that I could ever look up to, to give me advice. I've just learned all this stuff on my own. And this job is a bear. This job is awful. 11 minutes and 48 seconds, let me tell you. This, pro this job probably took me five fucking hours. This job was horrific. Add, you, add in, you add in the filming part of it, it probably added a, a whole hour to this. You know, I could have maybe gotten it done in four hours or whatever if I hadn't been worried about getting the right angles and trying to explain to people how to do a job that I've never done myself. How many times have you even seen a Ford Freestar? Exactly. So this is a job I've never done before, I've never done since, but I'm supposed to teach you how to do it. $38, I've made $38 off of this. I probably made, I don't know, $400 off of doing the job in the first place. Let's say I made $600. That, let's say that I profited $600 from replacing this radiator on the Ford Freestar. Dude, the $38 does not matter to me. Am I happy that this video helps people? Sure, like I get the fuzzies thinking about all the people that I've helped. It really means a lot to me when people say, hey man, I started my mechanic business because of you and now my life has changed. Hey man, you helped me fix this, fix my car, and I don't think I could have done it without you. You know, that means the world to me, sure, but that doesn't pay my bills. That doesn't pay my bills. How to replace a starter on a 2010 to 2016 Buick LaCrosse. I made $109 off of this in about a year. It just doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Why would I keep putting out tutorials that aren't getting very many views and aren't making very much money. Nobody's paying for this stuff. And this is why whenever people like and subscribe, that actually helps a lot. That helps so much because when you have more subscribers you're, uh, and you post a video, it, it pushes the video out to more people's home screens. And if you have a good thumbnail, people are more likely to click on it. So now I have 1700 subscribers at the making at the time that I'm making this video. This video maybe it'll get a couple thousand views. But how many views did this let's look. How many views did this get in the first day? So I posted June 2nd or I put yeah, June 2nd it got like 6 views or 0 views. So here we are a couple months in and it got a couple thousand views. The, it's not entertaining. Nobody's watching how to replace a starter on a 2016, 2010 Buick LaCrosse for fun. And that's kind of the problem. If I wanna make YouTube into my job, it has to make me money. If, it, if it's gonna make me money, it has to be entertaining enough for people to watch. So I've gotta take things in a new direction. I've gotta change my, I've gotta change my strategy up. So if you, look at, if you look at some of the newer videos that I've made, I've kind of been experimenting with different formats. I've been doing reaction videos. 
and I've been keeping it in the genre of automotive. Recycling, recycling lithium batteries with Jerry Rig Everything. Inconvenient EV facts. I'm doing this because I, I kind of realize people are triggered by the whole electric vehicle debate. Some people are triggered because they think electric vehicles are the worst thing since sliced bread. Some, th some people are triggered because you're a Luddite if you don't like, if you don't like electric vehicles or if you just like uh, internal combustion engines more than electric vehicles. You're just a total idiot for not wanting to electrify everything. So I thought maybe I'd make a couple reaction videos to this and it actually worked out, it worked out okay because look, there's a th almost a thousand views on why electric vehicles are stuck on dealership lots. And then are EVs rotting in fields in China? This got 2,800 views in the first two days. But the thing about this is because this is Sir Penza and he's in the thumbnail and that's why people clicked on it. They didn't click on it because, oh, are EVs rotting in fields in China? No, they clicked on it because they wanted to watch Serpenza because Serpenza is entertaining. You see where I'm going with this? It doesn't really make sense for me to keep putting all this work into tutorials whenever, yes, it helps people. Yes, I'm happy about the people that are helped, but I'm trying to make money. This isn't a fucking charity. I'm not here to, to help people and not make any money, that's not how jobs work. You understand? Jobs are so that you can pay your bills. So we go back a little bit. I did a, uh, a, I did a reaction to Ty the Car Guy's tool tour and that got 266 views. Why? Because they wanna watch Ty the Car Guy because he's entertaining. Dealers can't find mechanics, 100 views. Basically, my subscribers clicked on this to see what I had to say about this, and they didn't even get to hear what I had to say about this for the most part. They're seeing what CNBC had to say about this. Now, let's go back a little bit. This is a video where I talk about my snap-on tools that I regret purchasing. This got 628 views. That, that's actually pretty good in the scheme of of the videos that I put out because I got those 600 views in the first day or two. But the point is, it's too niche. It's too niche. It doesn't appeal to enough people for me to talk about like, like, oh, I bought these tools so you don't have to. I bought these tools and I regret buying them. Man, I don't care about that stuff. I don't give a shit about all these tools that I bought that I regret buying. It's not something that I can sit and talk about with enough passion to entertain anybody. And then you just have these, how to change oil on a Sprinter, 40 views. Sprinter sliding door repair. Dude, this Sprinter sliding door repair, I put a lot of fucking work into this. This was not an easy job to do when there's not really, there aren't very good instructionals on how to repair the sliding door on Sprinters. 37 views, how much money did I make from this? 27 cents. 27 cents in the first, uh, what is it? First three months, plus a, plus a little bit, 27 cents. I put so much work into this video. I put so much work into this video and to not have it hit like I thought it would, I just can't swing it anymore, guys. Let's go back a little, little bit further and there's this video. These jobs suck as a new mechanic. This has almost 2,000 views. Okay, all right, I can kind of see, I can kind of see where things are going. This is me talking about stories. This is me telling stories for the most part, and it kind of, it, it kind of set a little, it kind of turned a little key in my head, like a little light bulb went off, right? People might come and watch me talk about things that I've experienced. This video got 1,900 views and all those views came like almost immediately after posting. This was just me talking to the camera. But it's talking about being a mechanic. Let me be honest with you guys. I don't really care about being a mechanic that much. The reason I'm a mechanic is because it pays my bills. I became a mechanic, like I told you, because some guy said, hey, why don't you go post an ad on Craigslist for doing breaks? And listen to me. If you are homeless in your car and you can afford to get some tools and put an ad up on Craigslist for doing brakes, it can change your life. It has changed my life being a mechanic for sure. 
I used to borrow money from people. I used to have to have to ask money, ask people for favors. And now I'm pretty much self-sufficient. I don't need to ask for money. I don't need help from my friends in the same way that I used to. Being a mechanic is cool, but making videos about being a mechanic, I just did it because I didn't know what else to make videos about. On this channel, I'm gonna make videos about other things. Uh, you can see that I've experimented with the, with the reaction videos a little bit, and I've experimented with like talking head videos, kind of like this one, but I'm pretty much done doing tutorials. You might see like one more tutorial that I put out that I've got raw footage of that I still need to edit. You might see some older videos get cut and reposted, but this is the natural progression of a YouTuber. They put different videos up, kind of seeing what works and what doesn't, and then when you find out what works, you double down and triple down and quadruple down so that you can make a living, so that you can get more views, more subscribers, and make more money. And that's what you're gonna see out of this channel. You're gonna see maybe me telling some stories about my life. Maybe me making a story about the history of something that I'm interested in. Maybe a commentary video. Maybe more reaction videos that aren't related to automotive, the automotive world. And on that note, I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take a second and plug a couple channels that I've started and just kind of give you an example of why I'm not making car videos anymore. So let's go over here and we're gonna switch accounts. So seven months ago, I started doing a tech channel. It's Matt Dillon. This is just, this is just me talking about things that are not related to cars. So this is a private video. You can see new puppy gets a bath. This is me giving Jethro a bath. That's not related to this video. Ignore that. But look, I, I reviewed a scooter. I reviewed some headphones. I talked about my, my YouTube setup. If you go and like and subscribe to this channel, that'd be cool. If you're interested in technology, that's what I'm gonna be reviewing. I talked about scooters and cameras, camera lenses. There's a, a $700 litter box. It's called Matt Dillon, D-Y-L-A-N. This got 200, 260 subscribers in the last seven months. Okay. That's not that great. There's not, really, there's not really any bangers on this channel. Look, the best video was posted on April 22nd and it has 18,000 views. That's not bad. That's not great though. Another channel, Expert Opinions. This is about guns. This is about, uh, this is about guns. And the reason that I started doing this channel is because this is something that I know a lot about. I know a lot about guns. I've got a lot of training with personal protection and I've been carrying a gun since I was like 22 years old or 21. Since 2014, I've been carrying a gun. However, I was 21, yeah. And you can see we've got, we've got a short video that has 30,000 views, me and my buddy. And in one month, we've got 274 subscribers in one month. This makes so much more sense to double down on making gun content and making technology content because this has a more broad appeal. People are gonna be more interested in watching me talk about whatever, scooters or cameras or guns or anything like that way more than, oh, let me watch this fucking video where Oh yeah, let me go watch how to replace a wheel bearing on a 2013 Ford Fusion. whoop de fucking do Who cares about that? Look how much money I made from this. $129. $129, I could spend that on accident. I could lose $129. It just doesn't really make sense to make any more car videos, but I really hope that you stick around for the, for the non-car videos. This last thing that I'm gonna uh, that I always end my videos with is, you know, I hope that this video helped you. And if, if you have any questions, go and leave it, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go a little deeper into this. If you leave a comment on somebody's video, that helps a lot. It tells video, it, it tells YouTube that this video is something that people are really interested in.
it, it, it shows YouTube that, hey, this evoked a reaction from people. So even just leaving, a, you'll hear the cliche, oh, comment for the algorithm. That's a real thing. That directly impacts people's well-being. Whenever, if you wanna help somebody that you think is cool and you wanna make, help them make more money, comment on their video, like, on their, like their video. And when you have more subscribers, it pushes your video out to more people's home pages. That means that you get more views, that means that you make more money. So if you care about me, if you, care, if you think I'm a cool guy or whatever, go ahead and like and subscribe. Go ahead and leave a comment down below for the algorithm. Keep an eye up the hill, guys.